In this video, myself being Cam Nichols, if you don't know me, I'm a coach at the Road Cycling Academy. I'm gonna share with you three simple ways to get stronger on the bike, leveraging Wahoo system, and I'll also be incorporating some of the new features and functions that have just been released. So, let's get into it. First up, please know this video is not sponsored by Wahoo. We're not getting paid for it. However, the Road Cycling Academy has been in partnership with what was once the Sufferfest since 2019. And that relationship involves RCA members. When they join our course, the up-level road cycling course, they get a 12-week access pass to the Sufferfest. This is very important so we can facilitate a very important test up front, which we're gonna be discussing in part number one, and it also enables our members to leverage the very well put together workouts, which we're gonna be discussing in part two of this video. But if there are RCA members out there listening that are Android users, you can now rejoice. Welcome to 2021. Wahoo system is now available on Android as well. So, part number one of this video, is leveraging Wahoo Systems sports science focused testing protocols. Now I'm gonna give part one out of the three parts we're gonna talk about today the most time because there is a lot of meat on the bone and testing is so critically important if you wanna take your road cycling performance to the next level because it enables us to identify our training power zones. And if you're not leveraging or using your training power zones right now, there is a big opportunity awaiting. And I can appreciate you've got to buy a power meter or you've got to have a smart trainer, but I believe the investment is worth it. I've seen it hundreds of times now through the Road Cycling Academy. Now the Sufferfest for years, backed by Neil Henderson, a highly regarded coach of world champion and world record holding cyclists, and his team have been renowned for the 40P testing protocol, which essentially tests every facet of your cycling physiology within the hour on an indoor trainer. You do a couple of all-out sprints, testing your neuromuscular all-out rip it apart power. You do a five-minute effort, testing your maximal aerobic power or VO2 max. You do a 20-minute effort, which is your FTP, and you finish off with a nasty one-minute effort, which is your anaerobic capacity. Now, the beauty of this test, the 40P, is you're not solely leveraging that 20-minute FTP number to work out your upper end zones. You see some cyclists, they'll struggle given their physiology with a 20 minute test. But the same cyclist will perform very well anaerobically, which is kind of like your one minute effort. So if this same cyclist is just leveraging their 20 minute effort to work out their upper end zones, they'll never truly be training effectively. However, there is one big problem in my opinion with the 4DP. It's daunting, making it not a practical test to continually incorporate into a training plan for benchmarking purposes for many. Additionally, many people out there and a lot that join the Road Cycling Academy, a lot of them have never even done a proper FTP test before. A lot of them have never even done a five minute effort before or a 20 minute effort. So. The pacing effect, being able to optimize what your result is for 20 minutes or five minutes, I think that needs to be taken into consideration when thinking about what testing protocol is gonna be right for you. Thus, at the Road Cycling Academy, we use a test called the Half Monty. This is a ramp to failure, so very hard to stuff up, followed by a 20 minute sustained effort, which is all about keeping your heart rate within a certain range. This 20 minute effort is not hard, it's not easy, it's kind of in between. But this test gives us three pretty accurate numbers. FTP, maximal aerobic power, and your lactate threshold heart rate, which is another useful training metric, but perhaps a rabbit hole for another day. So all in all, it's my belief that for a lot of road cyclists out there, the Half Monty is the best testing protocol for FTP and for some of your upper end numbers external to going into a lab for these three reasons. Number one, it's a science-backed FTP test. It's very hard to stuff up. Number two, you can establish pretty accurate training zones for optimal targeted training. And number three, you have a practical test that you can incorporate into your training without feeling overwhelmed. So the second thing I wanted to talk about is leveraging Wahoo Systems on bike workouts effectively. So once you've worked out your training zones, which Wahoo System will do automatically once you've completed one of their testing protocols, you can start to leverage the on bike training sessions in the library you will gain access to in system, which are put together 
might I add, by the same coach that took Rowan Dennis to a world championship title. But first up, can I just say I'm really enjoying this new interface. Just how easy it is to filter by channel, categories, workout focus, and how much time you have. Now to add even more value to these new filters that I see, I would like to, and I'm speaking to the developers at Wahoo System, like to see this filtered also by TSS, which is a little number you get in the corner of each workout. Reason being, I feel like one of the biggest mistakes people have made in the past with the Sufferfest is they sign up to the 14 day free trial, they pick a random workout that's way too hard and they absolutely destroy themselves. They never come back again. Now TSS stands for Training Stress Score, taking into account the intensity of the ride and the volume of the ride, how long you're going for and giving it a combined score. As an example, if you went out and rode your zone four or your threshold power, I should say, for an hour, your TSS would be 100. But given this filter and functionality isn't available as we speak, I would suggest to people new to system to start with workouts, say around the 40 to 50 TSS and slowly build over time. I don't think it's a silver bullet by any means, but it will ensure you're not killing yourself up front and you're progressively making your workouts harder over time. The addition of some of the new channels, such as On Location, where you're taken to globally renowned areas in a travel documentary series kind of way, or A Week With, where you get to train for a week with head coach Neil Henderson or ex-pro Ian Boswell, or the extension of pro rides such as Norway, which we've discussed on the channel before, and I'll link it up there if you wanna check it out, are all impressive improvements. Regarding the calendar system, this has also become a lot more intuitive with adding workouts, moving them around, and I'm hearing we're just getting started with the ability to sync workouts to your head unit coming, along with more analytics. Now at the RCA, we don't use the calendar system inside Wahoo's system, reason being you can't create your own workouts yet. And as a road cycling coach, particularly for on-road training sessions, we certainly want that feature. So to summarize the workouts in Wahoo system, to get the most out of them, three things. Number one, leverage systems FTP testing protocols up front to establish your zones. Number two, initially select workouts that have a lower TSS and build from there. And number three, select workouts that align to your cycling goals. For example, if you wanna improve your endurance or your hill climbing, select those categories. I would also like to see an extension of those categories, like a bunch riding or criterium category where you might have workouts such as revolver, 14 vice grips, butter, the GCN equalizer, and there's many more. Now, of course, there are a library of plans that you can get access to as well, which we haven't discussed, mainly because we have our own plans here at the Road Cycling Academy. We mainly use Wahoo system for the half Monty and the workouts, which we've discussed today. And the third item I wanted to discuss with you, which is their library of off-bike workouts. From speaking to many people about Wahoo Sufferfest in the past, it's my belief I don't think many people had awareness that they had a really comprehensive library of off-bike workouts. And that library has now been further enhanced while maintaining the progressive nature of exercise difficulty. One challenge that I've personally seen with many amateur and recreational road cyclists, many within the RCA when it comes to off-bike workouts is they're like, where's the weight rack? Where's my kettlebell? Why? Aren't you telling me to do explosive squat jumps like the pro teams? But the fact is, if you've never done cycling specific off-bike workouts before, you don't start with a weight rack. So these workouts are a great introduction, I'd say for a beginner to an intermediate level, to off-bike training. Of course, there is yoga too, and I know many RCA members, I've noted, are leveraging the mental sessions before a hard workout. So if you're interested in trying Wahoo System, I've got a 14-day free trial. I'll provide a link below if you wanna check it out. Or if you're interested in joining the Road Cycling Academy, our final intake for the year is in November. We're welcoming on board the last 50 for the year. You can express your interest in joining that intake below. If you got value out of this video today as well, please don't forget to give it a like and I'll catch you all in the next one.